The impromptu 10-minute press conference wrapping up just a short time ago. The president, flanked by Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, Ambassador Nikki Haley, and National Security Advisor General H.R. McMaster, tripling down, leaving no doubt the U.S. will respond if threatened. President Trump also announcing he will speak by phone with Chinese President Xi tonight. A key ally needed to stop the rogue nation from taking their nuclear ambitions any further. At the same time, Secretary uh, James, the Secretary of Defense, excuse me, James Madison is Mattis is trying to calm fears in Guam, which finds itself in the center of an international nuclear showdown. This is the headline the people of Guam woke up to today. 14 minutes. That's how long it would take for a missile launch from North Korea to strike the U.S. territory. Officials in Guam are also handing out this pamphlet advising island residents how to prepare for a strike. Some of the ominous warnings include, take shelter as soon as you can. If you're caught outside, lie flat on the ground and cover your head. And do not look at the flash or fireball. It can blind you. Guam is not the only place feeling the pressure tonight. Millions on the Korean Peninsula are worried about the days to come. Here now is Jonathan Chang, the Wall Street Journal's Seoul Bureau Chief, and he joins us from South Korea. Jonathan, thank you for being here. What is the view from over there in Seoul tonight? Well, I think uh, people here in Seoul are um, they're accustomed to a certain element of rhetoric on the Korean Peninsula here, mm -hmm. but this is definitely more than we're used to, and it's certainly a cause for concern. Well, I read somewhere today that somebody said that um, they, they called their mother-in-law who is in Seoul, and she said, I, well, we don't really think that anything is going to happen. And I understand that that has been the feeling for, for many years, possibly a couple of decades. Does it feel different now? And does the fact that China weighed in today saying it would actually remain neutral change anybody's feeling in the region? Well, I think having China say that probably comes as some relief. I mean, mm -hmm. I think the last thing we want to see is a repeat of the U.S. and China fighting over the Korean Peninsula. That's not to say that they're going to stay out necessarily. It depends on what happens. And, yeah, to answer your question, I think that people definitely are uh, concerned to a new level here, and that's because we have a lot of uncertainty coming from both sides here. And uh, typically, North Korea, this is what they do. They bluster and they talk a big game. And uh, typically what we see from the White House, it can be quite predictable. It's usually steady, reassuring, and all of those sorts of things. And the president right now, you know, for all of the things you can say about him, he's not necessarily looking to calm things down. He has used language that people here haven't heard from the White House in a very long time when referring to North Korea. Mm -hmm. And so then there is a new president in South Korea that was just elected in May. How has that changed things in Seoul? Well, I think he's really been caught uh, between a rock and a hard place in a certain sense. His platform from the very beginning has been, we need to talk to North Korea. In fact, he's reached out to Kim Jong-un several times. He said, let's meet anywhere, anytime. Uh, have North Korea come to the Olympics, which South Korea is hosting in a few months' time. None of those uh, outreaches have been met with any response at all. It's not even a no. It's simply nothing. And instead, what we've got is we've had two ICBM tests in the last month, and we've had the death of Otto Warmbier, the U.S. Uh, yeah. citizen who was in North Korea. None of this looks good. And for him, he's uh, sort of stuck in a bad place here. And just to confirm, there were supposed to be some joint military exercises between the South Koreans and the United States, I believe, this weekend. Are those still on track? Yeah, those are on track. Actually, the dates haven't been announced, and what we're expecting is actually in about a week's time. But before then, we have North Korea basically saying that they're drawing up their plans to strike, you know, send four missiles to the waters mm -hmm. around Guam. And that's a mid-August deadline that they've sort of put on that to have the plan ready. And all it needs is uh, Kim Jong-un's uh, say-so at that point. So we still have a lot of uh, potential uh, red lines and, and, and uh ominous dates on the calendar up ahead. All right, Jonathan Chang, no doubt it will be a busy weekend for you. Thank you so much for being here.